Hi there! In this video, I will do several tests on uh, the European motorways, also called autobahns, in a Tesla. First of all, I will try to set a world record for the longest distance in one charge. I will not be super hypermiling at around 40 km per hour or 25 miles, that would be a little too dangerous, but I will try to follow the trucks in uh, the right lane. So I think I will be going at around 90 km per hour or 55 miles per hour. Another test I will do is um, how much time do you save when you are not supercharging. So on, on the way out I will uh, hypermile and not supercharge once and on the way back I will go at higher speeds. I will go to the speed limit and I will see uh, what the time difference is. And I also have a third test I want to try out. And that is how many supercharges can you skip in one day? You can see that I'm starting here. So the first supercharger is Randers and I'm going south all the way down. Hopefully I will reach Hamburg. That's exactly 450 kilometers from here to Hamburg and maybe a little bit south but we're gonna see about that so of course uh, jumping superchargers depends on how close your superchargers are and in Hamburg you have I think three superchargers can we see it here yes I guess there's three superchargers if I get through Hamburg I will try and drive to Bremen also, it would be interesting to see how many kilowatts I'm going to use today, how many kilowatts is available on the battery. On a full charge in my car, which is an 85D, I get 415 kilometers. And I'm pretty sure I am in range mode. Yes, I am in range mode. So, of course, um, this record attempt would be better if I had a, a brand new 90D which can go longer and has no degradation of the battery. So off we go. I am now at the Danish Autobahn and I'm just waiting for a truck so that I can slipstream it. My uh, energy consumption so far is 187. I have now caught up with the truck. The weather today is, right now it's 17 degrees. It should top at 2021, 20, so that's okay. Um, and uh, actually I got the wind in my tail at about uh, five meters per second. So that's also pretty good. Um, of course it would be perfect when it was 25 degrees that should make the wind resistance wind resistance lower but uh, the tailwind is good about my car I can tell you that I have the panoramic roof and I have the sound package so and uh, I also have leather interior so I guess these things combined makes the car 70 60 80 kilos heavier than a car without these things and um, my tire pressure i have set it to um, what is recommended from tesla that is uh, 310 i know i could uh, put more pressure in the tires but uh, on my way home uh, I want to go pretty high speed and I'm not sure that high pressure is very good when you're going high speed at the autobahn. I have now started a timer because this is where I'm going to end when I'm going back at Randers South because I'm stopping at the supercharger because I need to go some shopping on my way home. And also 
I have now skipped my first supercharger. So that was number one. And I'm now in uh, Aarhus. And I have skipped, whoops, here I am. I have skipped supercharger number two. My average energy consumption past the last 15 kilometers is 125. So that is pretty good. I have now got 75% of my battery capacity left and I have driven 137 kilometers so with this average at 133 average energy consumption I should be able to make it south of Hamburg so um, that seems pretty good the temperature outside is still 17 degrees it should have been 20 and sunny so the weather isn't uh, perfect could be a little bit better to reduce wind resistance i have found a german truck that i'm slipstreaming now so hopefully this is my ride all the way to germany if we look at the map you can see that I'm just about to pass supercharger number three. I have driven for one hour and 44 minutes. And I have used, uh, where is it? I have used 18 point five kilowatt hours all in all on the battery my average speed you can see that here is 79 kilometers per hour now time for another little update um, I am just passing the last Danish supercharger so that means I have passed four superchargers without charging I have driven 205 kilometers and I have got 63 percent of uh, my battery left my energy consumption has fallen a little bit so now it's 131 um, the German truck was not driving in a very energy consumption way so uh, I let it go he was uh, overtaking a lot of trucks and that meant a lot of speeding up uh, so I have now found a Danish truck that is going 85 kilometers per hour and uh, this also means that I have got a truck behind me I have read that uh, it should be best for energy consumption if you have a truck in front of you and also if you have a truck behind you I am pretty sure I can uh, reach Hamburg but uh, we will see I will reach Germany in about 15 kilometers I am now in Germany I'm uh, between the Danish border and uh, Hamburg and I have now used exactly 50% of my battery The new truck I have found is very good for energy consumption. It's going 85 and it's going very steady. Um, I have driven 285 kilometers, so if I can keep up with the same averages, I should go past 500 kilometers. That would be pretty cool. My energy consumption average has fallen to 127. Um, if you look at the energy uh, consumption I have right now for the last 50 kilometers I'm at 113 that is pretty crazy uh, the temperature has gone a little bit up and the Sun has started to shine it is 19 degrees now I am pretty sure no I'm sure I'm definitely sure I can go 
past Hamburg now. You can see here that I have just skipped supercharger number five, the Bustdorf supercharger. And I have set myself a new goal now, and that is to reach Bremen. And that should be uh, about 90 kilometers southwest of Hamburg. I have rethought my route. I'm still north of Hamburg, but I have played a little with the, the navigator and I can see if I go to Bremen. Um, there are 100 kilometers between superchargers uh, when I'm about to deplete my batteries. But if I go south of Hamburg, I can go to Hanover. Oh, where is it? Uh, yeah, I can go to Hanover and you can see the superchargers are pretty close. I am in Hamburg now. I'm just about to drive into the Elbe tunnel. I have just used two thirds of my battery. So I've got a little more than 30% left. And I'm just about to pass 400 kilometers, so it's very, very close that I get near 600 kilometers. But I have to think about the superchargers. So, if there's very little battery left, I will play it safe. I don't want to end up on the German Autobahn with no battery. It seems like I can make it to Hanover and maybe a little bit south of Hanover. And Hanover is a perfect place for me to end the journey because there are two superchargers, one southwest of uh, Hanover and one southeast of Hanover. So I can, uh, I can get close to uh, zero percent uh, in, the, in the battery, not ending with 15 or so, that would be a shame. On the map you can see that I have just passed supercharger number six here and supercharger number seven has been skipped here and then I'm heading for this supercharger. This could be my last supercharger um, but I really hope I can make it down here to Hanover and then maybe take this supercharger or I have set the GPS for this one just south of uh, Hanover. My projected range now the car says is 168 going with the average from the last 10 kilometers that's because it went a little uphill in uh, Hamburg. If I use the consumption for the last 50 kilometers, the computer calculates I can go 182 kilometers, but I need 191. So mm, 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 I'm not sure I'm able to take the supercharger here southeast of Hanover but I will have to take this one that's a bit shorter to this one okay now I am just about to pass the last supercharger so that is eight supercharger skipped in one charge on the European Autobahn that must be a world record um, I have decided to go here to supercharger Lauenau and that is my last supercharger. I will stop here because you can see there's 123 kilometers left and the road is starting to get pretty hilly so I guess my average consumption will go a little bit up. It has been 110 for very long. The total average is 125. 
I have got 22% left of the battery and uh, the projected range is 143 kilometers over for the consumption I have had for the last 50 kilometers and there's 122 kilometers to the supercharger. If we look at the consumption for the last 25 kilometers where the project is range is 151 so that's okay and for the last 10 kilometers the projected range is 191 so it should be okay but it is uphill right now and I hope it's not going too much uphill because then I might come into troubles but hopefully I'm gonna make it to this supercharger I guess you all have one question that you think about and that is what about my bladder well I've driven for five hours and 40 minutes and it's actually pretty okay I took a wee just before I left and of course I have thought about not been drinking too much so I have only drunk a quarter liter of water and I will not drink anything before I reach uh, the supercharger uh, the GPS says now the navigator that uh, I have minus 7% to the supercharger and 119 kilometers so I think I'm gonna make it that's just one thing that's a shame and that is when I reach the supercharger I've been going for 580 kilometers would have been pretty nice if I could surpass 600 kilometers I have now got 10% left of the battery I have driven 434 kilometers and I have driven in six and a half hour um, the navigator says that I will reach the, des the destination in minus 2% but uh, I'm not nervous uh, I have 45 kilometers left and uh, one of the superchargers near my home is uh, placed 45 kilometers from my home and I have done that in 8% many times so uh, I should get to the destination with about uh, plus 1 or 2% on uh, the battery a magic moment has just occurred the GPS says that I'm going to reach my destination with 0% so that's very good the temperature has risen it's now 23 degrees and you can see that the sky is almost blue now uh, I have turned on the air condition of course when hypermiling and that has been no problem until one hour ago because it has been cloudy and 18 degrees so there was no use for air condition but now it's beginning to get a little bit warm so this is about to be the end I'm only one kilometer from the supercharger just have to check the traffic I have got 2% left on the battery I have gone 580 kilometers 7 hours and 8 minutes and I have used 72 kilowatts of energy and here I am at the end so here are the statistics 581.6 kilometers 7 hours and 10 minutes 124 average energy consumption and uh, 72 kilowatt hours and I have got 1% left of the battery there is some kind of Tesla event here and uh, I just told uh, the Tesla sales guy 
that I have driven all the way from the northern of Denmark here to Hanover in Germany, 580 kilometers without charging, and he just went mad. I think he's gonna tell it to all his customers today just to convince them about uh, all the positive things about Tesla. Now I'm going to charge the car to 80% and then I'm giving a full throttle all the way home within the speed limits of course but I'm in Germany and they have Autobahn with uh, no speed limits somewhere so that's going to be pretty fun there's one test I haven't done yet that I haven't concluded yet and that is how much faster is it to go home when using uh, the superchargers I did it down here from uh, Randas in 6 hours and 45 minutes so now I'm going back to Randas and it will be uh, quite interesting to see what the time is when I come to Randas presumably it will be a lot faster now I have made a little calculation I used 72 kilowatts of energy and uh, I've checked on the internet and there is um, 9.7 kilowatt uh, energy in uh, one liter petrol so if you divide 72 with 9.7 that equals seven and a half liter of petrol that means I have gone 580 kilometers with one no no, no with seven and a half liter of petrol that equals almost exactly two gallons so that's nothing that just tells you how super efficient an electric car is compared to a fossil I have done another calculation I have uh, divided uh, the distance with the, the use of the petrol uh, the seven and a half liters so that gives um, if if you calculate in kilometers per liter that is 77 kilometers per liter if you put that in miles per liter that is 47.8 if you want to know it in uh, miles per gallon how much petrol i would have used if this car used petrol it was uh, 217.5 miles per gallon or if you are in Germany um, my petrol use if this was a petrol car is 1.3 liters per hundred kilometers that is twice as good as the crappy WV Lupo that came out some years ago that should be the best uh, energy consuming car but now of course it's electric cars so I have charged up the car to 80% and I'm off heading for Denmark ah this is just so much more fun I just hit a spot on the autobahn where there was no traffic in front of me and I hit uh, 211 kilometers per hour I am a little nervous about the traffic in Hamburg because I will hit Hamburg just in the rush hour so hopefully I will get through without too many queues but we will see first supercharging stop on this much more fun trip I reached a top speed at 233 kilometers per hour my average speed was 121 and uh, I used 56 minutes I am just south of uh, Hamburg now you can see Hamburg here and um, my next goal is the supercharging station between Hamburg and Denmark the car says I've got 15 minutes until I can continue but I think I will have room for more full throttle between Hamburg and the supercharger when I have some 
no speed limit roads. I just might have been a little too hard on the gas. I hit 225 and my average consumption rose to 500 watts. So that's pretty much. But now it's 250. I have just passed the Elp Tunnel and I'm in traffic. The autopilot is doing a very great job. I'm almost going no hands now because the speed is very low so that should be safe. Oh my god I love this car. I'm at the supercharger in Busdorf now between Hamburg and Denmark. Um, the last 10-20 kilometers there were no speed limits so I really really gave it everything. Um, my top speed on this stint, oh, again, 225. Um, it was actually a shame that uh, this uh, supercharger came now because I was uh, racing a golf, but uh, I was low on battery, so I could only go 220 kilometers per hour, but it was pretty fun. I love Germany and no speed limits at Autobahn. And once again, I came to the supercharger almost out of juice. I'm planning this to be my last supercharging stop. I'm just north of uh, Germany now. And I will then head for Randa's supercharger. The traffic on uh, the way back has been uh, exactly the same as the way down. A little bit of traffic in uh, Hamburg and then uh, nothing. Um, the last 70 kilometers uh, in Germany, I could drive between 180 and 235. So that was uh, fun and fast. Um, the GPS says I have got one and a half hour left of uh, driving. And then about half an hour of uh, supercharging, so that means about two hours left. And uh, since I started in Germany, uh, south of Hanover, uh, it has been four hours and 20 minutes. So this means I should make it faster, but actually not a lot. And I am in Randers now, Randers South, and uh, the time is 6 hours and 2 minutes, I've got 5% left of the battery, and uh, this means that I have done the return trip 42 minutes faster than uh, going down to Germany. And here you see the statistics of my last stint. 178 kilometers and I did it in one hour and 26 minutes. And here you see the timer. Six hours and three minutes. And on the way down to Hannover it was six hours and 44 minutes. So you save 41 minutes in about 600 kilometers when you use the superchargers instead of hypermiling. But I will say that actually I find uh, hypermiling safer than uh, going normal because you don't make uh, a lot of uh, you don't make a lot of overtakes and uh, you're driving safely behind the truck of course if you go too close the truck it can be dangerous all in all i have driven for 12 hours and 47 minutes and uh, i have done 1120 kilometers and finally i will say at this moment in june 2016 Casey Spencer still holds the, the world record for hypermiling. 
he has gone 880 kilometers, but that took him 26 hours. And he, he only drove uh, 14 kilometers per hour, approximately. Um, I have been going European autobahns following uh, the traffic. Um, and I have uh, reached 582 kilometers. I could have gone two more percent. Uh, I had that left on the battery, so that would be 600 kilometers. Um, if you divide uh, Casey's uh, distance and my distance, I have gone 66% of his uh, distance, or that is two-thirds. But I did it in uh, the quarter of the time that he did. Um, almost only 25% of uh, his time. One last thing I would like to tell about uh, my data that you can use is that in uh, June, July, August, especially July and August, a lot of Europeans travel across Europe on uh, Europe's autobahns um, and quite some people they travel at night because there's not much traffic um, and if you bring kits in your car you may have a little problem with the, the Tesla because you have to stop uh, one and a half each one and a half two hours but uh, my data has shown that it is not much slower to hypermile so if you hypermile at night um, preferably you can use a bus because they go 100 kilometers per hour in Europe and not only 85 90 kilometers per hour as the trucks did you can hypermile and you can go um, five hours and let the kids sleep during the night so you don't have to stop you can just skip superchargers so that's my final advice thank you for watching